Uh, back in January, I had a conversation with uh, Hari Ravachandran of Endurance International Group, uh, the parent company of Bluehost, the web hosting firm. Uh, and Hari said to me something that really caught my attention. He said, my business was built on open source software, and I want to give something back. And as we started brainstorming how to do that, he said a couple of things that completely rang my chimes. The first was that the majority uh, or a very large proportion of Bluehost customers are small and medium-sized businesses. And he mentioned a McKinsey study that attributed uh, the success of small and medium-sized businesses uh, to having a web presence and made the, made the assertion that uh, something like 10% productivity gains are seen in companies that have a web presence over those that don't. And in the course of that conversation, I th remembered this uh, wonderful piece I read in 1975 about solar energy called The Clothesline Paradox. Uh, you put your clothes in the dryer, your uh, uh, energy use gets measured and counted, you put them on the clothesline, it disappears. And I thought, wow, open source is like that. Uh, you know, we look at the size of companies like Red Hat and we say, well, open source has done okay, but it never had the huge impact that everybody expected, uh, you know, 15 years ago. Uh, and you kind of kind of push back and say, well, but, but wait, wait, Google and Facebook and Twitter are all built on top of open source and Amazon. But people say, oh, but look at all the value they added with their proprietary uh, stuff. But then you look at things like web hosting and ISPs and, oh my gosh, you know, what Hari made clear to me and reminded me of was just that basically what a company like Bluehost sells is access to open source software. And as you got, like to say, you, know, you said in your keynote this morning, for the price of a latte, a small business can get on the web. Price of a latte, every, and that's unthinkable you know, 15 years ago. So maybe that's, talk a bit that, that's that. sort of the, the, this, this notion of the virtuous cycle, too, because yeah. uh, we, we can provide that for small businesses because we have benefited from building our platform off of open source as well. So that's, that, that's a particularly poignant uh, point for us, too. We are able to provide that because of open source and then extend uh, open source to small business. And for them to be an enabler uh, to get online and reduce the friction of uh, becoming a business, that's just uh, extraordinarily impactful. Yeah, and uh, you know, we, we kind of have this notion you know, here at a, something like the O'Reilly Open Source Convention that the impact is just on developers. But you, know, you tell a story of how a small business can just have this idea. You know, they're not developers, they're not Silicon Valley startups, there's some people who don't have deep technical skills, but they can have a web presence up, uh, you know, they can build all kinds of cool features uh, using this wonderful cornucopia of available software. Yeah, you know, one, one other thing that's really great with that, uh, recently in Utah I met with um, one of the founders of Huntsman Chemical. He did several technology companies with Ray Norton and other things afterwards with that. And he used to say, he said to me, you know, doing stuff early days on the internet, I used to tell my developers, one day I'm not going to need you because he felt like he was always beholden to having several developers to just do anything that he yeah. wanted. But now with WordPress or Drupal or Joomla or these content management systems, great open source software, he was really excited about the fact that now he can actually do something himself, just like the example we gave this morning. They didn't need to hire somebody to do it. They were able to leverage the open source software to actually do the application themselves and create their own online presence. And one That's of the great. things I found with uh, talking to those, the, the folks from uh, the Disney um, Castle, Castle Chat, Chat. Yeah. yes. Yeah was the reliance on the community, that they went to the community to find yeah. out what to install, what to use, and what to how to grow their business. I thought that, that was quite Absolutely. impressive. Yeah, I want to bring up too the Cocoa Knits is covered in the paper. Uh, it's a friend of mine who runs it. I've known her for about 10 years. She's super creative. She built a fence out of corrugated uh, galvanized steel in her front yard. It had a horse trough or a bathtub and stuff. If it wasn't for the internet and these kind of cheap things, she wouldn't have a six-figure business that she's got now. She was able to do stuff. She is not technical at all, and yet she's able to turn what was a hobby into something where, and I'm pretty sure she's true, every knitter who's online in, a, in the world knows who she is. Yeah, and wow. she does it for no money. She sits in her house in Oakland. What was really striking to me was when we did the math. Now again, you know, just for background, uh, we, you guys did a survey of thousands of Bluehost customers, and you also provided us anonymized data from about a million customers. And we, 
did a bunch of analysis on that. And we did some extrapolation. It's really just back of the napkin stuff. But you know, taking the survey data and saying, okay, how big is your business? And applying it to uh, you know, in revenue size, applying it across the you know the million customers you gave us data for, and that's actually only a fraction of your customer yeah, base. Right, we right. came up with a calculated value size of those businesses of something like uh, you know 130 billion dollars. Uh, you know, so if you look at your whole customer base, you know it's it's somewhere quite north of that. You look at the whole hosting business, and it's it's well over a trillion dollars, a trillion and a half dollars of economic value. Uh, you know, I think that's just in the U.S. alone, represented by these small businesses. And so, you, if you look at that, you know, some of them were actually created online. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm, look, I'm trying to remember in the study. You know, we asked uh, you asked in the survey. Uh, you know, uh, what percentage of you know what would happen if their website went offline? And uh, I think nine percent of them said I would be out of business. That yeah. indicates that it's pretty much an online-only online business. business. Uh, you know, 19% said I'd lose a significant amount of business. So all, all over a quarter of them are small businesses that really are existing online. It's not just, you know, say a restaurant that happens to have, or a dry cleaner that happens to have a website. And you know, the amazing uh, extension of that is that really that's what we can measure in terms of the impact. And, right. uh, and many of these folks use sites to attract uh, walk into the retail locations, right. or uh, post a phone number oh, and actually yeah. uh, make a sale that way. So it it it, it was a dramatic, uh, uh, dramatic uh, results popped out of that for us as well. And that 124 um, billion that we calculated was a very conservative estimate, wouldn't you say, Roger? You did the the numbers on that. Everything we did, we tried to make very defensible assumptions because we knew we were, you know, these were kind of back of those things so that someone would be able to look at it and say, well, those are pretty reasonable things, and that. Chances are you'd probably think things were really higher if you, sure. if you looked at it, but we were able to kind of yeah. rationalize uh, what we were doing. I want to go a little on the, the walk-ins and stuff. You know, one of the things we found is um, I think there's around 25% of, of this small businesses don't have an online presence. Right. And you think, wow, what a missed opportunity and that this yeah. doesn't cost much. And it's exactly those kind of walk-in businesses that are probably most affected because I think most people, now it's even on their phone, you know, are yeah. doing a search. You don't even have to have good SEO with all the local stuff. You just need to be available and present, and then you can, you can find it. And well, so I the think point is that if you're not online, you really ought to be. Uh, yeah. One of the yeah. stories here is it's, it's so cheap that you're that's, not that's not exactly to That's exactly my point, is presence. that you, you don't yeah. have to do very much. It's not hard to do. Um, you're really being silly not to do it, even if you have the most low-tech walk-in business, even in a B2B low-tech walk-in business, someone's going to be looking for you that you wouldn't have known. Well, and I think, you know, realistically, the costs of having a website are now probably lower than the cost of having a Yellow Pages ad in the old days. Oh, you know? for sure. Yeah. And much, yeah. much better. And the yeah, ability yeah. To, be, to be nimble yeah. in changing yeah. how you're positioning yourself, your logo, and this was, this was evidence with the Castle Chat example, uh, the ability to just tweak and change and that, uh, to, be, to be nimble, yeah. that's really yeah. There's another part to it, and this is part, I think, of the open source story that I think is really great. When you look at the things that small businesses need, things like e-commerce and CMSs, I mean, all the leaders in the small business place are open source. I mean, you have to go like way, way down the list to find something that isn't open source. And Small businesses are able to use them. They're not trained. A lot of people aren't technical in these fields. They're able to get them. They're like shaped by their environment in ways that vendor things probably wouldn't be. Sure. And so you get this kind of great infrastructure to do stuff so that if you are a barbershop, you can get online and have your WordPress stuff out to yeah. maybe change whatever you want to change about it and go on. And then there's going to be proprietary things that make sense, but there's great infrastructure there and it's the latte price. Exactly. Yeah. And right. just, just even thinking back in terms of you know, what, what being able to search online to solve problems in the, in the example from the paper about having how to discern one plug-in from another, how to utilize it, it's all, the information is just all, all there. And we see increasingly even uh, more word of mouth as this ecosystem grows because there are the barber shops and the castle chats and others who are starting their business, telling their friends and neighbors, coming online, spending uh, a nominal amount to, uh, to become present. And that's, uh, I, I think yeah. we're sort of in the foothills right. of, uh, yeah. of this. So I don't know how much you guys put stake in this, but your easy uh, pulling out, of, I forget there's a name simple for script. Simple, simple, simple script, script yeah. I think makes a huge difference for yeah. a lot of these small and, and businesses. And that's what I was going to talk about is that 
It was it was years ago that we got in there, and you know you can go to these websites. You can go to WordPress.org, and you can download the tarball, and you can install it in your account. But most people aren't technical enough to do that. Tarball, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that. And then, but so then, what what you get stuck with is these non techies to go wait. I really want to blog, but how do I do this? So that simple scripts just said, all right, well, what, where do you want to install? We have the latest version. And then not only that, one of the major concerns with the o uh, open source stuff is security, keeping up to date versions, right? So with simple scripts, then it alerts them as soon as they log into their control panel. Hey, there's a newer version. Click upgrade now. One click upgrade. It downloads the latest version, puts it on there. And we're even rolling out something uh, just this month to automatically upgrade like your WordPress account so that yeah. you don't have to worry about that you're on an old version, you're going to get hacked and compromised. Yeah. And that's just, that's huge for yeah, utilizing this. Yeah, one of the things that was really striking to me uh, in this data was just how important WordPress is in the small business yeah. environment. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I've kind of known WordPress and used it, thought of it just, well, it's just a blogging platform, but it really is way more than that. You know, yeah. it really is the foundation yeah. of all these small business websites. It it's is. a huge plug-in yeah, ecosystem. It's probably yeah. the biggest ROI for a small business because the, yeah. the cost of learning it is very simple. Yep. There's a support system, there's templates, there's tons Logins, of plugins. And that's that's you can do the, anything on it. Yeah. In terms of even just the, the coral reef notion of, of, of ecosystems within ecosystems and WordPress itself is one with yeah. all the ancillary businesses around it to provide uh, professional templates and other things. It really, that, that's, uh, that's a significant part of it. One of the interesting things I thought that came out of the survey that's kind of related to technical sophistication is a quarter of the people who answered the survey were on Macs. And was it 20% on yeah. iPads? And 20% were on iPads. Yeah. So they might not be technically sophisticated from a developer perspective, but they are making, yeah. they're not buying the cheapest thing sure. right, 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 right. To, yeah. to get going. And that's showing a kind of a funny variety of, of platforms that they're using for their personal, right. uh, personal use. And I think that says something about, like, I mean, one, they are the people who are online and not the people who are off. But that, while they might be like developer savvy, not, they are web savvy enough. Yeah. Well, I was also struck by the fact that uh, you know, Firefox and Chrome were yes. the leading browsers. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and actually even Windows. mobile mobile Safari, actually if you put mobile Safari and Safari together, they're actually the uh, the leading browser. But uh, uh, that was in fact when we went through the survey, that actually was the first thing stuck that stuck out yeah. was that this wasn't what we expected because I think what you expect is people are going to buy the lowest cost and take the default things. Right. But they're not, so they do care. Yeah. And I think that this is why WordPress becomes such an important thing. They know what to do, right? Yeah. I want to have a changing message. I, you know, I want to be able to express what my business does in a way yeah. that. And you, to your remark before, Roger, about technical sophistication, that's not that, that we see it firsthand, but it's becoming less and less material uh, because uh, of all this focus on accessibility. It's, yeah. it's simple scripts, but it's also the community that's out there that allows you to look something up, find the answer to it, solve it right then and there, technical yeah. or not. And that, 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 was, that was an impressive yeah. piece, too. I was also struck by uh, the dominance of PayPal as a payment mechanism yeah. for uh, these stores, more than 53%. Uh, of the survey respondents who had, did e-commerce uh, use PayPal, uh, you know, you know g giving you a sort of sense of the history here. Though, you know, 12% uh, took a check or money order by phone. In other words, their <laughs> website said, "Send us money." Yeah, know, so they're stuck in, the, you know, in the you know, pre-web era. Yeah. You know, 26% uh, took a credit card via an online form, and 9% took a credit card over the phone. So, you know, you basically have 20% of these businesses, roughly, who are just the very edge of the web era. They have their toes in, uh, you know, they're advertising their product, but they're still using, uh, taking an offline transaction. But of those who do, you know, just the, again, the enabler of uh, this made possible by simple web technology is quite impressive. I think it brings up the, the kind of the friction argument around these things, is that things that have very little friction are what are going to be used. WordPress has hardly any friction to it. Yeah. PayPal. Because, yeah. That's right, yeah. and PayPal, because of its long presence and, and knowledge, it's got pretty low friction for getting mm -hmm. going. And I think that's important to a small business yeah. because they don't have the bandwidth to say, well, I need to pick the best 
you know, whatever it is right. they're doing. They just need to get going, and that's why they're taking yeah. money orders. Why change a system that doesn't take sure. much Sure. Well, the effort? other thing that was really striking to me in the, in the survey data was that 75% of the customers who responded said, I built my site myself. That's that right. was, yep. and, and we even broke that down WordPress. further, where even yeah. the beginners, the people who said they were beginners, half of them built it themselves. Yeah, and, 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 and what was it, another 6% another, uh, uh, had it uh, built by a friend or family member. So, yeah. I, yeah. you know, again, this, the, the talk about the democratization of technology. Yeah. Again, I assume as yeah. you get to bigger and bigger sites, this is, is partly an artifact of the fact that these are the, the smallest of small businesses on up through, I think there were a relatively small percentage were you know, more than $5 million. Um, yeah, a great image uh, came up with the, the friend and family is the 12 year old. Yeah, know. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 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 uh, Almost know, done, Dad. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, it, really, it really is a, a wonderful way that we see how technology has come from these sort of alpha geeks of 15 years ago down to the point where literally people who aren't very technically sophisticated can build a website. And, yeah. and that's, that I think that's a, that's a fundamental thing that, that, that we're pushing for with the whole notion of this boss program is to, is to, is to uh, accentuate that, uh, that, that virtual, virtuous so cycle. So maybe you can say a bit more about that? Sure, so the, 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 the Bluehost Open Source uh, Solutions Program is intended uh, uh, for our part to do two things. One, in recognition that how much open source has in terms of enabling small mm -hmm. uh, business, uh, we uh, will continue to build bridges to be able to bring open source to uh, our ecosystem of millions of, of, of small business users. But then also, too, building the relationships back with the open source community to personalize that. Yeah. You talk from going from the alpha geek to the, to the actual yeah. user, really, really putting a face to uh, the customers that are using those, uh, those technologies. And we think that that, 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 that cycle itself, we can do far more to make things accessible to really bring it home for both. And, and I think there, there's just tremendous opportunity there to, yeah. well, to bring more open source to the, to the, uh, to the community. Yeah, yeah and, and another thing too, just sort of, sort of the next generation of that that we really want to accomplish is, if you think about it, there's some really super well established now open source, like we talked about WordPress and mm -hmm. so many people, Drupal and Joomla and some of these other ones. But what about some of the new ones? What about some of these guys out here that are developing something new and how do they get people to start to download it and distribute that? So we've recently hired more programmers on our Simple Scripts platform and behind this BOSS program because we really want to make it a better distribution platform for new guys coming up so that they can get, I mean, with, with millions of websites on our network, they get into simple scripts, they're exposed to those people automatically, and they can start to get users behind their project and then maybe get some developers well, I, who I, like it, and it's, yeah. it's great. Well, I think, you know, part of that also is you've got to help people keep up with the, the advancing wave exactly. of technology. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Another view of that too is to say, if uh, you look at the, what what takes, uh, what are the inputs for a successful open source uh, project? You need users, you need contributors, you need feedback, and certainly uh, where we can do our part to enhance those areas. That, that's that, that's a critical component yeah. too. Yeah, I think that's a really really important point. Uh, you know, open source developers often don't value unsophisticated users, and you guys yeah. have found a path to take, you know, all this, you know open source software and really bring it to, to a new market. Yeah, to the masses. Yeah, yeah, and it's funny because when we, we think about, you know, in the old days when we used to think about bringing open source to the masses, we thought about it would happen on the desktop. Yeah. And yeah. in fact, you know, it's, it's here it is buried invisibly in, yeah. you know, this software that's, as, as you guys like to say, you know, available for the cost of a, a latte a month. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that, that was one of the dynamics that, I, that we saw in the report as well, is that the, the typical startups that we see have a different stack. They're using different languages than, than what shows up in the report. Here the dominance was PHP, MySQL, and JavaScript, where in the startup community it's Ruby on Rails and all sorts of other things in the stack. So it really kind of reflected the tools they're using um, are the traditional LAMP stack that's been around for quite a while. And Yes, you, know, it, it, you look at this sort of this layer of, 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 of hidden value, if you will, and the paper makes a nice point about uh, open source's con contribution to the economy. But even the technologies are making a contribution, perhaps unknowingly, to the end user, yes. uh, even perhaps in the PHP or, or, or MySQL yes. category. They're behind the scenes for the user. So there's, there's a very yeah. rich uh, uh, and diverse um, uh, set of things yeah. going on there. I think when you really look at 
really look at technology, real technology as the stuff that disappears because it seems so obvious what it does. And I think when you think about what's going on is that, that I can publish what I need, that I can do my transactions and so forth. You almost don't care what's underneath the cover, but that happens. Oh, of course it should happen, right? This is what should be there. And now we've got these millions of people doing, doing just that, yeah. making something out of nothing. Well, that, that kind of brings up, uh, I think, another important point. You know, we're, we're really concerned with the state of the economy. And, uh, you know, small business really is one of the engines of job creation. And it really is fascinating to look in this data and see the, you know, the huge number of businesses uh, that are really tiny, you know, under $10,000 a year. So it's clearly a, a, an income supplement. And then as you move up, you know, you see these things that are ten to $50,000 and fifty to one hundred and you know, 100 to 250. And you're really seeing the, the way that you know, some of those companies are going to stay there, you know, in, you know, in the, I'm making $50,000 a year and I'm, I'm my own boss. And some of them are going to grow into substantial businesses. I remember back when O'Reilly was one of those, you know, <laughs> tiny businesses and we were celebrating the fact that, uh, you know, wow, people were paying us five bucks for this pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> it was great, you know. Well, I think there's yeah. something that's intangible about this, too, is a lot of these people are doing the business they want to do. You know, yeah. I, when I was interviewing Julie for Cocoa Nits, I mean, you know, her eyes were bright. She was like, yeah. I turned this into a business. Yeah. I, I can't believe it. You know, I'm talking about things like WordPress, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, from going from well, that's being great. an artist. My, my wife just recently went through that herself. She's got a passion to just make hair bows and clippies and things for little babies and she had sold them in a local boutique and just a couple of months ago just started selling them online and 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 then all these people from around the world and she gets feedback oh I love your hair bow somebody in Australia you know and all this yeah. stuff and you never get that and, and and even though she might not make a lot of money it's like yeah it's the validation of, of your passion yeah I don't think you can uh, understate that yeah. part enough is that one of the things that the, the web does, and that this is enabled by all this low-cost stuff, is that you're able to reach out and find your tribe yeah, in a way yeah. that was impossible. 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. was, it, yeah. it wasn't even something you could yeah. fathom, that That's someone true. in Australia would know that you made whatever little thing yeah. that she made. And now it's like almost yeah. like it's an everyday thing. And we like accept that this is one of those things yeah. about technology being the stuff that you don't really notice that, yeah. oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Why not? Make well, and, and just this up. idea that a tiny business can be a, an exporter, yeah. you know, is, is, is really something relatively <laughs> yes. new on the world yeah. stage. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, what's next for you guys? Well, we, we'll, we'll uh, uh, in terms of uh, building out our, our team for Boss, uh, mentioned hiring uh, Jared Smith, who's uh, really uh, uh, set uh, uh, set himself uh, apart in terms of uh, being uh, uh, his experience in the open source community, uh, being a, uh, an O'Reilly author, being uh, someone who uh, has worked as the project lead in Fedora, et cetera. So he's uh, he's building out this this notion uh, of boss and the ability to really build those bridges and give back. And we're we're just uh, we're just totally delighted about that because we just it 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 it, 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 it hits everybody right here. You see the, yeah. the meaning of what it is that we're doing. And uh, to bring that to life, uh, we have, you know, our, our, it's a transformative thing for our company, honestly. And That's great. You, you, you spoke to him about uh, what you took away from that conversation with Hari, and uh, it was a, a very provoking conversation from his part, too, and we're, and we're shifting our ways uh, uh, to be able to align to that. Well, it's certainly also my goal to have this community, the open source developer community, sort of understand just how much impact they have out in the world far beyond you know the obvious, you know, close-in people who are contributing to projects, and uh, you know this open source community has just really created enormous economic value, and I think it's great that you guys were willing to share your data so that we could start to make that case. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, this, for us, this is sort of you know, step step one, and uh, we'll we'll see you again next year. All right. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, great.